I think the number one thing I hear at Globe Deniers is that water is flat and level. Of course, flat and level are two different things. And the other thing I hear is that water can't curve. That's impossible. Or is it? Cue the intro. So flat and level. Globe deniers, none of them seem to understand that they're not the same thing. Ask anybody in construction. Just because something's flat does not mean it's level. And just because something's level does not mean it's flat. Um, and can it curve? Well, here's two examples. Well, would you look at that? Water curbing. Oh, look at this. Water curving and sticking to a ball. Hmm, imagine that. Okay, not necessarily what globe deniers are talking about. They're always talking about large bodies of water. Water can't curve. But those two images are important because they also show that water conforms to the forces acting upon it. Um, in this case, that we're talking about for large bodies of water, gravity on a globe. But what about large bodies of water? I mean, Daniel Pratt, who clearly doesn't understand the model he's trying to debunk, wants you to take some sort of fantastical laser measurement system and measure the surface of a swimming pool from end to end to measure the curvature. I doubt that there is a system accurate enough to measure that curvature, because even if you if you understood the model you're trying to debunk, which clearly it doesn't, the radius of of the Earth as a globe would be so large, and that distance to the end to end of a swimming pool is so small. There's no way you would be able to measure that. But is there large enough bodies of water? that we need to measure and account for the curvature of that water. Ship. In this case, a 3D benchy, but it's a hull form. We test hull forms uh, in order to try to find, you know, the most efficient hull form, the one that flows through the water the easiest, takes the least amount of energy, saves fuel, meets whatever criteria, design criteria, you're looking for. So this would attach to the bottom of a tow carriage. And a tow carriage would pull it through the water, and you know, you'd test it at whatever draft you need to have. In other words, a certain amount of haul below the water, a certain amount of haul below the water, above the water. And you tow it, and you measure the flow characteristics across that hull form to be able to determine whether it meets your whatever design criteria you're looking for. Where am I going with this, you might ask. Turns out that some of these tow basins are so long that the rails the tow carriage ride on have to be curved in order to match the curvature of the water in a tank because that's the only way to maintain a constant difference distance between the tow carriage and the water surface. Here's a couple of examples. It's an article from the American Society of Mechanical Engineers on the David Taylor model basin, one of those testing track testing tanks I talk, talked about. And it's a pretty long one. It states in the article to meet requirements for uniformity in the speed of carriages which tow models, the rails on the basin walls upon which these carriages will run had to be far straighter and far more level than the most perfect railroad track. In fact, to eliminate the effect of gravity on the motion of the towing carriage, the tracks are not straight 
in the usual sense, but follow the curvature of the earth. Here's another article about the largest hydrodynamic test facility in Europe. A really long one. The building which houses the B600 is more than 600 meters long. The rails that support the 120-ton moving platform had to be designed while taking into account the curvature of the earth for proper alignment. So as you can see, in this case, we have curvature of water measured and accounted for in engineering design and construction. The globe deniers wanted evidence of curvature of large bodies of water. Here it is. I'm Mike, and I'm out.